fast, focused, and fearless. Here's everything you need to know this rush hour of February 5, Wednesday. I'm Risa Diaz. Opening today's rush with government agencies scrambling to contain the threat of the new coronavirus. DOH says they're on top of things, but some senators think otherwise. Manos Banyas has the full report. It was in January 21 when the two Chinese tourists who tested positive for the 2019 NCOVARD arrived in the country. But in Tuesday's Senate hearing, it was revealed that the health department has not yet conducted contact tracing on all of the two patients' co-passengers. Yung hotels and restaurants, understandable, mahirap yan. But yung aeroplano, una-una, may ano yan, di ba? Meron namang listahan ng setback, tsaka may, man, man, may, may flight manifest. Di ba dapat, uh, ngayon pa lang, for me, dapat, Secretary, 100% na alam na nung mga pasahero na yon na uh, they've been exposed to the virus. But Health Secretary Francisco Duque clarified 17 epidemiologists and 40 surveillance officers have already reached out to at least 50 of 331 passengers. He pointed the blame on airlines withholding information. I'm told that these airlines are invoking the Data Privacy Act. I don't know how. This is rather strange. In a, in a time of uh, urgent uh, you know, a, a situation, but the Civil Aeronautics Board and Philippine Airlines were quick to defend themselves, saying they're only following orders. We already submitted the names of the passengers. As of uh, the moment, uh, we were able to contact a total of 74 as advice out of the 132. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugadi pointed out miscommunication. For him, the DOH should be coordinating with the CAB and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. But Duque said they're too caught up with the virus, but this did not sit well with some senators. It is also a failure of leadership on the part of the health department. The DOH should be in charge on top of the situation, not the CAAP, not the BI, not the DOTR, but the DOH. The health secretary vowed that they will boost their contact tracing efforts in the next 48 hours, as well as probe on the possible reason for the supposed slow response. I have always assumed that they already have the competence, they already know what they're doing, they are familiar with the protocols. The Interior Department and the Philippine National Police have expressed readiness to help the DOH. Reporting for News 5, Me and Los Baños, we are One News. Airlines are also having problems of their own. Apart from so-called miscommunication rules with the DOH, it seems flights are also affected. Gerald de la Peña tells us why. Chinese nationals in the Philippines are scrambling to get flights that would take them back to China. Aviation officials said some airlines, like Cathay Pacific, still mounted flights for humanitarian consideration after the temporary travel ban has been imposed. The problem is, flights to China are almost running out. Ang mga pasahero natin, kahit hindi pa nila araw ng pag-alis ngayon, ay pumupunta na po yung mga foreign uh, travelers natin para bumalik sa kanilang mga bansa. Airline officials also said there aren't much flight crew left as they are obliged to go through a 14-day quarantine after their flights to China. That is why Filipinos stranded in Hong Kong, Macau, and China may also have a hard time getting flights going back to the country. Wala na po tayong mapapabalik na Pilipino, wala na rin tayong mapapaalis na mga Chino. Sa papunta sa kanilang bansa. The Airline Operators Council, meanwhile, cried foul over the health department's allegations that airline officials are not cooperating in gathering passenger information. Nepomuceno explains government agencies have not yet reached out to them. There's no set protocol to whom we are going to give the information. Of course, these are very delicate information and the airline can be sued in releasing any of this information. Cebu Pacific has also responded, saying that it has been working with the government from the beginning. In a statement, the airline said there is no impediment to provide any and all information needed by the DOH. The company adds it has contacted passengers and opened a hotline to enable those aboard the flights being investigated to call the airline. For News 5, Gerard De La Peña, We Are One News. Here are some of the day's biggest stories. Persons under investigation in the Philippines for the 2019 novel coronavirus, ARD, has reached the 100 mark on Tuesday. This includes the first PUI in Antique. But there are no new reported cases of NCOV-positive patients in the country. 
Bloomberg reports that the number of cases of the Wuhan virus worldwide jumped to more than 3,000 overnight. This brings the total to over 20,600 cases. Death toll from the virus outbreak now stands at 428. Part of that casualty counts is the second death outside the mainland of China, which has been confirmed in Hong Kong. The patient was a 39-year-old man who had traveled to Wuhan, but the NCOV outbreak isn't the only problem rocking the Asian financial hub. Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam has restricted the territory's border crossings, but stopped short, or rather, but stopped short of a total closure as demanded by hospital workers who are now on a second day of strike. Meanwhile, Macau is suspending its casino operations and related industries for half a month in an effort to contain the virus. This after confirmed cases in the gambling hub rose to 10 on Tuesday. China is now making use of the latest technology to try and curb the spread of the virus. Reports state that drones are now being deployed in Hefei City to spray disinfectant in the area. Police in Shandong Province also flew drones carrying speakers to disseminate information related to NCOV prevention and other policies. Patients at a drug rehab center in Nueva Ecija will have to be transferred as officials look to convert the facility into a quarantine site for OFWs. Marian Enriquez with the story. This is the Mega Drug Abuse Treatment and Rehabilitation Center in Fort Magsaysay, Nueva Ecija. It stands on a 75,000 hectare property and has a 10,000 bed capacity. The 2019 NCOV Interagency Task Force Committee has recommended to use the facility as a quarantine site for the many overseas Filipino workers who will be returning home from places with NCOV outbreaks. But this doesn't sit well with members of the Sangguniang Pandalawigan of Nueva Ecija. Ito po yung design as a mega rehab doon sa mga uh, involved sa drugs. Hindi po ito nakadesign para maging quarantine area. But while they are planning to pass a resolution expressing disapproval of the move, Town Mayor Adrian May Cuevas has no problem with the idea. As a nurse, she said there's nothing to be worried about because the virus is not airborne. This is not super airborne. Ito yung direct contact, hindi ba? So, wala naman dapat, if, if I'm, I'm correct, wala naman dapat ikatakot dahil hindi ito nagsuspread ng true hangin. President Rodrigo Duterte also supports the move, saying he will expropriate the mega drug rehab center. I can always, uh, it is conf confiscatory in nature. Then you make it a hospital, uh, bring in the equipment and uh, you stay there inside the building where the egress and ingress is controlled. As for over 1,000 drug users in the rehab facility, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Chief Aaron Aquino said they have to be transferred first. Hindi pwede kasi silang sama-sama doon. Eh. Hindi pwedeng ihinto yung rehabilitation process ng mga ating drug personalities doon. It should be, they should be placed somewhere else. Having said that, Aquino called on the health department to first designate a place where the drug surrenderies will be relocated. For News 5, Marian Enriquez. We are One News. Fake news related to the NCOV outbreak rocked another hospital. This time, it's the East Avenue Medical Center in Quezon City. The hospital issued a statement clarifying that there is no truth to the circulating rumors that they are on a lockdown due to a suspected NCOV patient. The hospital added that they are continuously providing healthcare services to the public in all departments, including ER. 
Meanwhile, the health department has found a facility willing to cremate the body of the 44-year-old Chinese national who tested for coronavirus in the Philippines. The DOH says this is after some crematorium operators backed out from the job due to fear of infection. However, Health Secretary Francisco Duque stressed that the body is sealed and is no longer capable of transmitting the disease. Wala na ho. Hindi na ho magiging carrier. Pero naka-sealed kasi ito. Ha? Naka-sealed body bag ito. So talagang uh, kahit na may uh, agam-agam, yung po measures uh, ensure that this is still coronavirus uh, will not uh, be able to uh, get out. From the Philippine Star, the Philippine Ports Authority will now be restricting the entry of ships coming from China or any of its administrative regions so as to not or so as not to paralyze the country's supply chain. While there is no ban in place, the PPA says it has laid down rules to limit the movement of ships, crew, and passengers to prevent the possible spread of the NCOV. This from the Free Man, the Provincial Task Force against the novel coronavirus in Cebu will be operational starting today. This after Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia signed the executive order establishing a task force that will execute measures to prevent the virus from entering the province. The EO laid down the protocols for all incoming Filipino and permanent resident visa holders directly or indirectly coming from mainland China. Hong Kong and Macau within the past 14 days. Manila customers brace yourselves for longer water interruptions as water level at the Ipo Dam continues to drop. Shaila Francisco has the details. Banoy and his family now wash their hands more frequently due to the threat of the 2019 novel coronavirus. But they still remember to conserve water, recycling it as much as they can. Araw-araw ko tinotoro yun sa kanila. Mugas talaga. Pero tubas yan, tama lang. Na hindi di makakapagtapon ng tubig na madami. Ngayon, naghahanda na lang talaga. Every day, Banoy's house in Barangay Batasong, Quezon City, still experiences four-hour water interruptions. It is part of the rotational outages being implemented by Maynilad since October after the reduction of its allocation from Angatda. But Maynilad customers may soon have 6 to 22-hour interruptions as water in Ipo Dam continues to go down below the maintaining level. Aside from Angat Dam, Maynilad also relies on water from Ipo Dam to supply its customers. Dati, nung maayos kasi yung tubig mula sa Ipo Dam, yung scheduled interruption, mas maikli ang nangyayari sa aktwal. So kung ang isang lugar ay nakalagay sa kanilang schedule ay 10 hours sila araw-araw mawala ng tubig, ang totoong nangyayari ay mga 2 hours lamang o 3 hours, minsan low pressure lang. Pero ngayon dahil nagumpisa na rin bumaba yung antas ng tubig sa Ipo Dam, so baka magiging mas istrikto na kami sa implementasyon, baka masunod na yung actual na schedule sa kanilang lugar. Still, may nilad advises consumers to store enough water. Gumamit ng malinis at may takip na lalagyan para pagkailangan din um, magamit for everyday use, uh, meron silang nakaipon. Um, it, this is important kasi lalo na ngayon uh, may, may ano, kumakalat na virus. So, responsible use of water uh, is essential. Maynilad assures its consumers that they won't run out of water the whole 24 hours, saying the sanitation of customers shouldn't be sacrificed amid the spread of NCOV. Shaila Francisco, we are One News. Filipino doble cara singer Marcelito Pomoy has advanced to the grand finals of America's Got Talent after yet another stunning performance. Judges Simon Cowell, Howie Mandel, and Alicia Dixon, together with the audience, gave Pomoy a standing ovation after he has sang Andrea Bocelli's Conte Partido. Man or Mandel even said that Marcelito has the best shot at winning the contest because he or they just keeps getting better and better. But Cowell warned him that he needs to pull more tricks um, up of his sleeves and now that his act has already been revealed. And if you haven't watched Marcelito's performance yet, you're in for a treat. Here are the stories to watch out for later today. The government is set to release the January 2020 inflation data. 
after the Senate, the Health Department, and another government agencies are scheduled to face the lower house to discuss developments in the 2019 NCOV outbreak. And the University of the Philippines National Institute of Health says it has developed a test kit for the Wuhan virus. While a scientist from Ateneo de Manila University has proposed studying the potential use of coconut oil as a possible treatment for the NCOV ARD. And that's how today is shaping up to be. Join us again next time for another round of Rush. I'm Risa Diaz. We are One News.